What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, I wanna to talk to you about what the outsole of your shoe means. That's right, we're gonna be interpreting the wear patterns on the bottom of your shoe. First of all, this is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I wanna hear about your successes and I definitely wanna hear about those setbacks. And I also wanna know how long do you hold on to a pair of running shoes for? Like, do you hold on to them past the time that you have stopped running in them? Do you have trouble like throwing stuff away? I suppose what I'm asking is, are you a hoarder of running shoes? Me, I am generally not. However, for some reason, I do have an unhealthy emotional attachment to this pair of 4%. These were the first super shoes that I bought back in 2017. And for some reason, I just cannot bring myself to give them away. So I will probably hold on to these bad boys forever. But because I've only run about 200 miles in these shoes, the wear pattern on the bottom really isn't going to tell us much. To get some useful information, I'm having to pull out the pair of shoes that I have the most miles on right now. And for me, that is my Nike Pegasus 38. And these shoes have 510 miles or 820 kilometers on them. So the wear pattern on this outsole should tell me something, right? So I should point out that my silly video is no replacement for actually getting a gait analysis. If you want to find out what is going on with your gait and your stride, especially if you're experiencing any kind of pain or injuries. Basically, I'm going to be giving you a rundown of what the wear on your outsole is saying about your gait. And I'm not suggesting that you make any changes, but it's always fun to know about ourselves, especially if you're into running. And maybe that will influence the next pair of running shoes that you buy. Now, for anyone wondering why I have kept this pair of Nike Pegasus 38 for 510 miles, I am only holding on to them until the Nike Pegasus 39 gets dropped. And I just want to hold on to them in case I need to compare the two. Okay, but let's talk about wear patterns. So go right now, go grab your oldest pair of running shoes. You can press pause. And I want you to look at your wear patterns as you're watching this. Basically, wear patterns are speaking to us. And what they're telling us is about the patterns of our gait. They're also telling us about the positions of certain joints when we're coming in contact with the ground and how we're pushing off. And ultimately, with every step we take, every running step we take, we are slowly wearing down molecule by molecule the outsole rubber on the bottom of our shoes. And they are a great indication of how balanced our gait is. Oh, but before we go any further, if you are the type of person to also use your running shoes for every day activities or perhaps you like to go walking in your running shoes and then wear them to run the next day this is probably not going to be as accurate because our gait patterns for walking and for running are completely different so you're going to get the best interpretation out of your running shoes if they are only your running shoes make sense but if you've been a runner for a little while and you've been living under a rock and maybe not watching any running content on youtube or reading anything about running you may not have heard about pronation or over pronation and supination that's okay because i'm going to break it down for you right now so very basically pronation is when your feet roll inward at the ankle and your arch collapses into a more flattened position. Now pronation to some point is beneficial. It helps the foot with shock absorption and it definitely aids when we're like running on trails or on any uneven surfaces. So pronation to a certain extent is good. Over pronation is not. And it makes sense, right? Just in the name. Doing too much pronation is a bad thing. Everything in moderation, including pronation. On the other side of the coin, supination is when your foot rolls outwards. Okay, so got that? Pronation is when your foot rolls inwards towards your midline. Supination is when it rolls outwards. But hold on, because these things aren't necessarily a bad thing. So now's where I want you to grab your pair of running shoes and take a look at the bottom. And let's look at this outside edge. You see any wear coming down this outside edge anywhere? So wear on the outside edge is considered somewhat normal. So in all likelihood, you probably heel strike when you run. The majority of us do. And that is generally the reason for seeing a little extra wear on this outside edge. Because runners, when we heel strike, we are in a more supinated position. Now, after we heel strike and we're in a slightly supinated position, we tend to roll inwards slightly. Now, as we come down on our heel, we are slightly supinating and then we roll inwards to pronate slightly, which helps absorb the shock of our footfall. Now, this is a very dumbed down analysis of a foot strike. And that's why when you get on the treadmill and you do a gait analysis, they have cameras from all sides and they slow it down. Now, for me, at least on these shoes with the most amount of wear, I don't have a lot of wear on the outside. But what I do have is wear on the outside heel of my foot. Now this is also an expected place to find wear on your shoes for the most part. If you're finding wear in the center of your heel, it can indicate that your foot is collapsing into overpronation when you land. But wear on the outside of your heel like this is pretty good. Or at least it's not as bad as it could be. It's also beneficial to look at the outsole of both of your shoes. And I know that when I hold up this pair of Nike Pegasus 38, I can see a very similar wear pattern on the outside of each heel. But on my right foot, I don't know if you can even see this on this camera, but on my forefoot, on my right foot, we're seeing a lot more wear right here in the center of the forefoot, where on my left foot, it really isn't as bad. In fact, I've got considerably more tread on the forefoot of my left foot than I do on the right foot. On the right foot, it's actually pretty smooth. So while our bodies are not always exactly symmetrical, a little bit of wear difference is to be expected. However, these wear differences can also suggest that you've got some muscle imbalances, or maybe it's not any muscle imbalances. Perhaps it's just the biomechanical differences in one leg compared to the other. It could be completely natural for you to have one shoe with a different 
different wear pattern than the other. But if you haven't noticed that anything's wrong and you're noticing that one shoe has a remarkably different wear pattern, it might just be another excuse to do a little more strength training. Strengthen those little supporting muscles, which I guarantee will make you a better runner. Asterisk. My guarantees aren't worth anything. Okay, so what was the point of this video? What was the point of me telling you about some wear patterns on your shoes? Well, really, it's the type of information that I give you every week. It's some of this stuff that you can look at and just go, huh, okay, and then go on with the rest of your day. Because ultimately, by looking at the bottom of your shoes, you're really not going to be able to tell anything. You're not going to be able to get a sound diagnosis of your gait. For that, you do need a professional and you will need a gait analysis. Perhaps you've been running in a neutral shoe and you notice a little more wear on the inside or the outside of your shoe, which could mean that you could benefit from a more supported shoe, a motion control shoe. Oh, one more thing. If you're looking at different wear patterns on each of your shoes, or going back to this muscle imbalance, and you've been having little aches and pains, perhaps in your knee, perhaps in your hips, this is actually a good place to start because making small tweaks to your gait or wearing a different pair of shoes that actually controls the motion of your foot throughout your gait could benefit your entire kinetic chain and possibly reduce injuries in your knees or in your hips, which, let's be honest, a lot of us runners have experienced. Okay, so in a nutshell, pronation is when you roll in. If you have wear on the inside of your shoe, too much wear, probably a solid indication of overpronation. Supination is when you roll out, too much wear on the outside edge of your outsole, probably indicating that you are a extreme supinator. Sounds pretty good. I wish it meant something good. However, a little bit of wear is perfectly fine. Your shoes are going to wear down. And I know that a lot of people talk down about heel strikers. And to those people I say, don't shame me. I'm a heel striker and I'm proud of it. And you know what? It's perfectly normal to have a little bit of wear on the outside edge of your heel. But before I move on to my week of running, which was actually pretty good, let me just grab another pair of shoes. Now these, these are my Puma DV8 Nitros. I have about 300 miles or about 482 kilometers in these. And I wanted to look at these shoes because generally speaking, I run a lot faster in my Puma DV8 Nitros than I do in the Nike Pegasus. And the funny thing is, is that when I look at the bottom of these shoes, even though I run a lot faster in these shoes, and when I say I run a lot faster in these shoes, what I mean is, is that I generally land more forefoot, which tends to happen when we pick up the pace. What I'm noticing is that the evidence doesn't show that. The evidence on the bottom of these faster shoes still shows the same wear pattern with the most amount of wear happening at my outside edge of my heel. Now, perhaps there is a little more wear on the forefoot here, just because I'm definitely landing on my forefoot a little more, at least that's how it feels. But I was actually surprised to look at these faster shoes and see so much wear here on the outside edge of my heel. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you look at a pair of daily trainers compared with a pair of shoes that perhaps you do some speed work in. Let me know if there's any differences. All right, I had a pretty good week of running. Pretty good week of running. Started off on Monday with 7.6 miles. Very easy. Unless something bad happens, I really like to go out and take an easy run on Monday. Because Tuesday, Tuesday is usually a workout day. And this Tuesday, I knocked out 8.2 miles in total. I warmed up for a bit. Then I did five four minute intervals with a two minute recovery in between. Then I cooled down for a bit. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while and you go into the comment section on a fairly regular basis, you've probably noticed Large Eddie. And on last week's running and training vlog, Large Eddie told me that he did four times five minutes at kind of a five 5k pace and I thought to myself yeah it sounds like a pretty good workout I'm gonna take that except as you already know because I've already told you I modified it slightly and I did five four minutes with two minutes recovery so thanks Eddie thanks for that motivation for me to try something new for me it's really not that new I just generally do my intervals by distance rather than time but this was a fun way to mix things up as you can tell I'm a pretty fun guy. Now, this is usually my down week for running. I usually work on a two week rotation. So one week of running is a little more than the other. And because I was working on the weekend, I had to knock out my long run on Wednesday. And Wednesday I went out and I knocked out 15.1 miles. Again, very easy. It was very warm, but I had a really good time on those 15 miles. Oh, quick question before we move on to the next day. If you go out and you run for over a couple hours, do you ever go out totally fasted or do you always bring some kind of fuel with you? I ran this 15.1 miles without anything but a few sips of water. I didn't even bring a pack to carry my own water. I ran out to a park and they have a water fountain and I took a sip of water there and then ran home. And I only bring this up because when I got home, I was extremely hungry. And I think I probably could have benefited from a little extra fuel. Well, let me know what you do. I guess ultimately the vast majority of my runs are completely fasted. I usually just wake up and go. Okay, but enough of that. On to Thursday. Thursday was a pretty good day because I actually met up with my local running group down at Siesta Key. But I got there a little bit early because Thursday is usually my tempo day and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I was going to want to run easy with the whole group or I was going to want to go out and actually crush my workout that I had planned. So I got there a little early and I ran one mile to warm up and then I did three miles at tempo and then just cooled down for a little bit. So I got a solid three miles of tempo effort in. Now this was on the road. And then I went out for my second run. I mean, technically it's my second run, even though the second run happened immediately 
after the first run, but I stopped my watch, so that makes it two runs. And for the second run, I ran seven miles, and we were running on the sand, on the beach, it was a beautiful morning. And for this run, I ran the first two miles very easy, and then I picked up the pace to about a tempo pace for about three miles before pulling it back just a little bit. So I was pretty happy with the 11.2 miles for that day, especially because I knew that Friday was gonna be my day off. After that nice day off on Saturday, I decided to go a bit longer than I usually do on a work day. And on Saturday, I went out for 14 and a half miles. I had to get up pretty early in the morning to get this run done before going to work. And it was toasty, but I was happy I knocked it out. And then Sunday, I woke up and I ran over to the mall and I did that same run that I do every other week up and down the car park of the mall. Knocking out a total of 7.7 .7 miles on Sunday, bringing me for the week to a total of 64.35 miles, which is about 103.6 kilometers. So all in all, not a bad week, especially considering that this is my down week, or at least my lower week of every other week. You know what I'm saying? Okay, guys, let me know about your week of running, successes and setbacks, write them in the comments. And also, do you ever even bother look at the wear on the body me shoe? And if you do look at the wear on the body me shoe, have you ever taken any action because of that wear pattern? Let me know in the comments. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.